Welcome back to SNS Grills, everybody. My name is Mike from the Everyday Barbecue YouTube channel, and today I'm going to bring you a recipe that's near and dear to my heart. I'm going to be showing you how to put together a proper Chicago style hot dog. We're going to do this cook out on the slow and sear travel kettle, and it's coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. Thank you so much for your support. We genuinely appreciate it. And if you're not following us here yet, consider doing so by hitting that button down there. You don't wanna miss out on any of these great videos that we're putting out. Today's recipe is so special to me. Now, let me give you just a little bit of history. There's no real documented evidence as to who invented the Chicago style hot dog recipe. Vienna Beef, who by the way, is the company who makes the hot dogs that you wanna use for this recipe, they claim that this recipe was invented by some European immigrants back in the 1890s. But most of the history that you'll read on this recipe suggests that it really became popular during the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, there was one local grocer who decided to start serving up hot dogs with all the vegetables that he could find on them. He topped these with a lot of vegetables, and that's where the term dragging through the garden came from. He wanted to be able to serve these hot dogs for five cents. Imagine how many you could buy now for five cents. How many would you eat? You can answer that question at the end of the video. And over the years, this recipe has evolved. For example, back in the day, people used to put cucumbers on these, but now this recipe is locked in solid. And if you don't do it correctly, people are gonna let you know about it. So today, I'm gonna show you exactly how to put it together and exactly what order to put all these ingredients in. So for starters, we have an all beef hot dog by a company named Vienna, and that's the true and one and only hot dog that you're gonna serve for this recipe. You're gonna couple that with poppy seed buns. There's lots of different brands to choose from, really not one in particular, but just make sure it's poppy seed. Anything but poppy seed is not really an authentic Chicago hot dog. Now a classic Chicago style hot dog is gonna be served up with these toppings in this order, starting with mustard. Then we have our bright green relish that's also made by Vienna. It's the only company that'll make that particular style relish and that's the one that goes with this recipe. Followed by diced onion. And when you dice these onions, you wanna cut them down to just under a quarter inch in size. Fresh tomato that you'll cut into slices a dill pickle spear, what we call locally here is sport peppers. Now these are some tangy spicy peppers, but it's not a Chicago hot dog if you don't put them on. Last but not least, you're gonna dust each one of these with some celery salt. And absolutely, positively, no ketchup. All right, now that you know everything that you're gonna need and how this goes together, let's talk about setting up the slow and sear travel kettle. For today's cook, I have the charcoal basket in place, the mini drip pan to make cleanup easy, and we are gonna monitor temperatures with the SNS 500 remote thermometer, which I ran through the probe port. Our target cook temperature for today is 225 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the perfect temperature for these. We want these to plump up and become nice and juicy and absorb a little bit of smoke flavor, but we don't necessarily want them to burst or for the skin to break. We wanna keep all those juices inside. So a lower temperature is the better way to go. And this is a very short cook. This does not take long at all, 20 to 30 minutes once you get these hot dogs on. Now you can sear these at the end if you really, really want to, but I don't recommend it. I prefer to do it just indirect the entire cook. So setting up the cooker for today's target temperatures, we're just gonna start with about six to eight coals in one corner of the charcoal basket, light those with a fire starter and allow those to begin catching. Once they do catch, go ahead and place the lid on the cooker and open the top vent fully, as well as the smoke hole on the bottom. We're gonna keep our main vent closed all the way, and we're gonna use the smoke hole as our lower vent today. Now give that a few minutes to begin rising in temperature. Because our target temperatures are 225 to 250, you're gonna to wanna to start choking back your vents when you hit about 150 to 175, until you get it dialed in perfectly. Now here's what my final vent settings look like, top and bottom. But keep in mind that there are a lot of variables to this, so that just serves as a starting point for you. Once you get those temperatures locked in and those vents set, you can go ahead and add a couple more unlit coals to the basket, but you're not gonna need many. This is a short cook. All right, now that our cooker's dialed in, there's nothing left to do but to get these hot dogs out on the indirect side of the cooker. We just wanna allow these enough time to cook, plump up, and become super juicy. This will take about 20 to 30 minutes, and during that time, I'm gonna bring you back in here and show you how to steam those buns. So with our hot dogs on the cooker, 
Now it's time to steam these buns. We're simply gonna start with the pot with about an inch or two of water at the bottom. Go ahead and get that under low to medium heat until you start generating steam. Then you're gonna place a rack across the top of the pot and place the hot dog buns on top just to allow those to soak up some steam for a couple minutes. The goal is to get these warm and soft, but not soggy. As soon as those are ready, go ahead and place those aside. We only have a couple minutes to wait until those hot dogs are ready. I'm gonna go check on those and pull those off the cooker as soon as they're ready, and then we'll come inside and build these hot dogs. I'll see you then. gave these about 35 minutes. I just wanted a couple extra minutes for them to really start to sweat and plump up. So they are perfect. And these buns are also perfect. Steam those for just about five to seven minutes. And now it's time to drag these through the garden. Start with some mustard. Now our bright green relish. Now I know a lot of you have had relish before, but trust me, this stuff has a very unique flavor and this is the exact stuff you need for this recipe. Next is our diced onion. couple of tomato wedges in each. Pickle. Sport pepper. And last but not least, this really, really finishes this off. We're just gonna dust each one of these with some celery salt. This just brings the flavor out of all those veggies and elevates it. It's really, really important to have this on there. You can do as much or as little as you want. Absolutely picture perfect. A work of art, if I may say so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and serve one of these up and then we're gonna do the taste test. So this might be how you would serve it up if you had company over or if you were doing a picnic or maybe you're camping. Again, lots of different ways to serve it up, but this is the way to put it together. You can serve them with potato chips, french fries, you can serve them on their own, but the hot dog is the most important part. And now it's my favorite part of the video. All right, now time for that city of big shoulders, Chicago style bite of this Chicago style hot dog. Cheers, everyone. Holy cow, I'll be back in a second. Now for somebody who's never had this recipe before, you might say it's a little bit of complex when it comes to flavors, but everything goes together absolutely perfect. There's a beautiful, beautiful little hint of smokiness on the hot dog. It's plump, it's juicy, and when that skin breaks, when you get that bite, it's just a flavor explosion. Combine that with all these veggies, those sport peppers really stand out, they're tangy, there's heat. The pickle, of course, is absolutely perfect with any hot dog. And then you have that incredible flavor from that bright green relish that just comes through. And the celery salt just finishes this off by bringing all the flavors out of all those veggies. Now, when you do this at home and you take your first bite, make sure it's a big bite because you want to get a little bit of everything in that bite. That's where the real magic is in this recipe. And that's it for today's video. I really appreciate all your time hanging out with me today. Take care. Till next time, remember, two zones are better than one, and I'll see you on the next video.